Hey everybody, this is Jay Moore. I'm the uh, founder of the group The Ordinary Christian, uh, which is designed to empower, equip, and to encourage ordinary Christians to live powerful missional lives that shine the light of Christ in their part of this dark world. And today I'm here to bring you this week's missional living devotional. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, a very important principle for living a missional life. It's important. It will help you shine the light of Christ brightly in your part of the dark world. But I got to tell you up front, it's not an easy principle to implement. Matter of fact, it may be one of the most difficult, hardest things that you have ever done. And uh, it's called forgiveness. And so we're, we're going to take a look at that. And I'm going to share with you a, a story, a true story about a friend of mine. Her name is Teresa Baldwin. We were high school friends and it's a story about her daughter and her son-in-law and how her son-in-law was killed uh, through, by a drunk driver one day and how forgiveness on her part and her family's part has allowed her and her family to be able to shine the light of Christ, to share Jesus in, in many different facets and, and, and in, on different platforms. And so uh, we're going to take a look and, and really what we're talking about here is when it comes to forgiveness, we have to be willing to look past people's faults to see their needs. It's exactly what Jesus did for us. He looked past our faults, our sin, our, uh, our uh, indiscretions. And he looked and he saw the greatest need, the biggest need, that we were lost and drowning in a sea of sin. And if and we were helpless and hopeless to do anything for ourselves. We desperately needed a Savior, and God sent His Son Jesus to take our place on the cross and offer for us forgiveness of sin, sin that we committed against a holy, righteous God, against Him Himself. And, and so now He asks of us to do the same thing, to look past people's faults, the way, the, the places where they've hurt you and how they've injured you and how they've insulted you and, and, and forgive them. And by forgiving them, then you're looking and, and providing a way for you to shine the light of Christ into their dark life, probably in a way that they've never experienced before. And so with that opening, I'd like to share with you the story. And it's, it's written by Teresa Baldwin, my high school friend. Uh, we've been friends for 37 years, and she's a strong, loving Christian lady, uh, has a beautiful daughter, and I pray that uh, this story motivates you, because if, if you're holding bitterness, if you're holding resentment, you're holding something against somebody, you are also denying or hiding the light of Christ to be sh shown into their dark lives. So let me read to you her story uh, about her family, her daughter, and her son-in-law. It was on June 24th, 2011 at 5.30 a.m. My daughter's life would be forever changed as well as the rest of our family. On this way, on his way to work, my son-in-law, Jason, was hit broadside by a drunk driver and killed instantly. Jason and Heather had only been married nine months when his life was suddenly taken from him. I will never forget receiving the phone call. The shock and unbelief were my first response. You just are never prepared for this kind of news. I just hurt so bad for my daughter. My daughter, who swore she would never get married, had found a good man who loved God and family and now was gone. I remember driving down south to Southern California with Jordan, who's like our son, and the nine hours to get there to my daughter, and I was crying the whole way down. But from the beginning, my husband and I both said, we would not hate this young man who took our son-in-law's life. We would choose to forgive. We taught our kids at a young age that because Christ died while we were still in our sins, we need to forgive others. Not that we excuse what they have done, but we do forgive and we let go of the anger. It's a choice. My kids saw firsthand growing up what kind of, uh, my, my kids first saw firsthand growing up what happens when you don't forgive through their papas 
uh, who's lost his firstborn son at the age of three through a tonsillectomy that went wrong, and he remained bitter his entire life. One of the first things my daughter said to me, Mom, I don't want to be angry or bitter. It's been two years since the accident, and in that time, we have been able to share with many people that it was only with God that we could get through this. We were also able to share with Jason's parents that because of Jason's decision to receive Christ as his Savior, that he that we would see him again one day. My twin sister and I went to the course house back in September for the sentencing of the young man Joseph, who took our son-in-law Jason's life. Again, I could have chosen to be angry and bitter and hateful towards him uh, as I spoke at the courthouse, but I chose not to. I chose to tell him we forgive him and that my daughter forgives him and that we did not think he was a bad man, but just that he had done a bad thing and needed to get help for his drinking and that he would, that he could not do it alone, that he needed God's help. Joseph was not sentenced that day to, to, due to his brother being murdered just three days prior to the sentencing. There are allegations that murder was connected to Joseph's time in jail. I don't know how much I can share more about that at this time, but I can tell you my heart just ached, not only for him, but for his mother and the rest of their family. After we left the courthouse, my sister and I went to Joseph's mother and aunt and hugged them and told them how so very sorry we were for their loss. The aunt asked, uh, said to me at one point, I wish I knew what your daughter looked like. I told her I had brought with me a wedding picture of Jason and Heather and asked her if she would like to see it. And she said, yes. And then I asked her if she would like to have it. And again, she said, yes. She also gave me her card if I ever wanted to stay in contact with her. A month had gone by, and one day I thought, I really need to write Joseph, but I didn't have his address, so I went to the email, uh, his aunt, and I realized that I didn't have her email address, but just a phone number, so I called her. She told me she was having such a bad day, and that there were several things going on. I had sent something right away, and I asked her if I could pray with her. She said, yes, please and then said it was extremely uh, exactly what she needed that day. Now, as I share all of these things, I want you to understand, I truly believe it was the Holy Spirit working in me to talk to the family, to hug them, and to pray with them. And when you have the Holy Spirit working in your life, and you let Him guide you and lead you, it's wonderful. I can't tell you the love and the peace I have had in my heart for this family and I know it's all because of Jesus. The same day I spoke to the aunt, I later received a text from Joseph's mother saying she had heard that I called her sister and that she believed it was a confirmation from God that she had our family and Jason's family on her mind. She also told me that her sister had given her the picture of my beautiful daughter and Jason and that she looks at my daughter every morning and praise for her. You know, when this thing first happened, we heard all kinds of stories about Joseph and his family, and I just found out they weren't true. Joseph is a human being. He made a bad choice, and because of that choice, another human being is gone. He has shared his how sorry he is, and I hear that he's trying to make a difference while he's in jail by holding Bible studies and speaking to the young men inside the cell. My prayer is that he continues to see his need for God, that he continues to seek for seek God, and that he does make a change, and that he does get a second chance. Above all else, I pray that God is glorified through all of this, that people will learn the importance of of forgiveness, and that they come to know that Jesus is the only one who can save us. There's a song that came out right after the accident called Forgiveness by Matthew West. It's a beautiful reminder of what Christ has called us to do. This life is temporary, but for those who have put their faith and trust in Christ, we will live forever with Him one day. 
And I do believe that day is coming soon. You know, what a wonderful uh, example we have, both in Christ and in Teresa and Teresa's family, of what it's like to forgive. She could have chosen to hold resentment and bitterness and anger towards this man and his family, but instead she chose to forgive. And as a result, she's been able to build a relationship where she's able to speak truth into this family's life, into Joseph's mother's life, into his aunt's life. She's able to share Christ. That probably wouldn't have happened if she was still holding on to resentment. So if we want to live a powerful missional life, I want to share with you, we have got to learn to forgive others like Christ has forgiven us. We have to look past their faults and look towards their need. Who do you know today that you still haven't forgiven? Who are you still holding resentment to? Who are you still holding bitterness towards because of the pain and the hurt that they caused you? To forgive them is not to excuse their behavior. It's just to no longer hold it against them. And to give you an opportunity now to shine the light of Christ into their life. To share the love of Christ to them. I want to encourage you this Thanksgiving. This is the week of Thanksgiving. Forgive and go shine the light of Christ into that person's life. Take care. God bless you. We'll see you next week on Missional Living Devotional.